In the first week, I started talking about the algebra of vectors. I defined the addition of vectors, scalar multiplication, and length. These operations had their root in the algebra of ordinary numbers. Addition and multiplication are borrowed from numbers, and length is very similar to absolute value. Now I want to move on and define some new operations, operations that are entirely unique to vectors. The first of these is the dot product. It is called a product or multiplication, but it is an entirely new kind of multiplication. It takes two vectors, so it is a multiplication of vectors, but instead of producing a new vector, it produces a scalar. For this reason, in other mathematical contexts, it is often called the scalar product. How does it work? Assume u and v are any vectors in Rn. As with all of these definitions, I want to define, if I can, for general Rn. A definition defined in any dimension can then apply as needed to R2, R3, or wherever else you need it. It is powerful and convenient to give the most general definition possible, even if it comes with some extra levels of abstraction. Anyway, the dot product of u and v is the scalar I get from multiplying the entries of u and v together in pairs, first by first, second by second, third by third, and so on to the end. Then I take these products and add them all up, and this produces a scalar. Let me give some examples. First, in R2, the dot product of 4, negative 1, and 0, 9 is formed by multiplying the first entries, 4 and 0, and the second entries, negative 1 and 9, and then adding the result together to get a total scalar of negative 9. Next, here's an example in R4. The dot product of negative 4, negative 3, 0, 8, and 1, 0, negative 3, 5 is formed by multiplying the first entries together, negative 4 times 1, and then the second, negative 3 times 0, and then the third, 0 times negative 3, and then the fourth, negative 8 times 5, and then adding the result together to get 44. But why define this? It seems a bit strange, this mix of multiplying and adding coefficients. Well, it turns out this construction does a bunch of useful things for the understanding of vectors. First, the dot product is related to the angle between two vectors. Specifically, the cosine of the angle between two vectors is equal to the dot product of the vectors divided by the length of each vector. Of course, in this equality, the vectors cannot have length 0, since that would lead to division by 0. However, that makes sense, since the 0 vector doesn't point anywhere and therefore can't be used to define any angles. It can be proved, I won't do it here, but it can be proved that this matches the usual definition of angle in R2 or R3. The angle is always taken to be at most pi radians. In R2, for example, there is the small and large angle between any two vectors. The smaller angle is always taken in this construction. However, you can argue that this should be the definition of angle in R4 and higher. Angle is a visual construction, something we can see. I know what it means in R2 and R3, but I can't visualize R4, so what is angle in R4? Intuitively, it should still be some kind of measure of separation of directions, but without a visualization, that's very fuzzy. The dot product allows angle to be precise. I can now calculate angles in any dimension I want using the dot product. Let me talk specifically about perpendicular vectors. To be perpendicular is to meet at a right angle. The cosine of pi over 2 radians, a right angle, is 0. Therefore, the dot product following this equation has to be 0 as well. With this, I know that the dot product can identify perpendicular vectors. The dot product being 0 is equivalent to the vectors being perpendicular. This turns out to be particularly useful, as I will show later in the course. For now, just as an example, you can see that the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1, which point in the x and y axes directions, do indeed have zero dot product and are perpendicular. This discussion of angle leads to an important question of the perspective about the dot product. Since the dot product is small when the angles are close to perpendicular and large when the angle is small, I can say that the dot product somehow measures similarity between two vectors. 
And this is the best sort of general idea of what the dot product is doing. Now that I've defined the dot product, let me talk about its properties. This is a natural step for mathematicians. Once we have some kind of new structure, we want to know how it behaves. And this is also very useful for those who have to do the mathematics as well, since understanding its properties means that it can be used well and used fully. So this is a new product, a binary operation. The same kind of questions as were asked about addition and multiplication can be asked. Is this commutative? Is it associative? Is it distributive? First, the dot product is commutative. The order can be changed. U dot V is the same thing as V dot U. The proofs of these identities are being left to the activities for the week, so look for them there. Second, the dot product is distributive over vector addition. If I take the dot product with the addition of two vectors, it really looks like a multiplication. This distributes into U dot V and U dot W. This is one of the reasons that it makes sense to call this operation a product. So it is commutative and distributed, distributive with the only addition, vector addition, that makes sense for it to be distributive with. Is it associative? That is, if I multiply three things together in this product, does the order matter? I can start to think about this, but quickly I run into trouble. If I do the first dot product, u dot v, in this triple, the result is a scalar. Re recall, the output of the dot product isn't another vector, it's a scalar. Therefore, this output can't be used in some new dot product because the input of the dot product is a vector. The dot product with w after the first dot product is finished doesn't actually make any sense. So this operation is not associative, not because the associative equation doesn't hold, but much more fundamentally, because the whole idea of a triple multiplied together doesn't even make sense for this product. Associativity isn't even a reasonable question. Finally, let me give you one more property briefly. The dot product of a vector with itself is the same as its length squared. This is not difficult to verify, again, in the activities, but it is a useful fact to know. In the analysis of vectors, the dot product quickly becomes ubiquitous. To demonstrate, let me talk about triangles. The cosine law is a rule you might remember from high school trigonometry. It relates the lengths of the sides of a triangle to the cosine of one of the angles. If I express this as vectors, I can construct a triangle with two vectors and the third side is the difference between the two vectors as a local direction from the end of one of them. Then the cosine law here says that the square of the length of the side opposite the angle, here the length of u minus v, is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides minus the expression 2 times the length of u times the length of v multiplied by the angle between u and v. That's the cosine law, at least presented in vector language. How is it to be proved? There are many proofs in the history of trigonometry, but let me show you one using the dot product and its properties. I'll start with the left side and try and produce the right. I'll first use the property that the dot product of something with itself is the length squared. The starting left side is the length squared of u minus v, so I can make that the dot product of u minus v with itself. Now I have a dot product with subtraction, which I can distribute. Distribution of two binomial terms works like normal polynomials. I match all the four possible matches, foiling this out if you like that terminology and I get these four dot products. Then I use two more dot product properties. The first and the last I turn back into length square, and I switch the order of this term to show that the second and the third are the same. This leads to the third line of the proof. Now I can reorder slightly, putting the length of v squared ahead, and for the u dot v I can replace with the length of u times the length of v multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them according to the relationship between the dot product and the angle that I mentioned earlier in the video. The result is the right side of the cosine law, and therefore the cosine law is now proved. Note, this proof consists both of the written symbols and my explanation. If I were writing this proof out, 
I would write sentences and paragraphs in between the calculations to explain the setup and the steps of the process. Proof needs writing and explanation, not just calculations. Hopefully this proof shows you a little bit of the utility of the dot product and its properties, and the importance of studying the properties of an operation. I used several different properties in the proof, all of which were necessary to the argument.